At the surface, we know the crust, it's made up of rocks. We see that in our everyday lives. Rocks like sandstone and granite, many different types of rocks we're familiar with. We see those every day. But what's inside the earth when we go deeper beyond that skin? Well, at the very center of the earth lies the core, just like the stone. And this is like a planet inside the planet. It's the same size as about the moon in the night sky, and it's very different to the rest of the earth, like the stone is different to the rest of the peach. The core is entirely metallic. It's made up of about 95% iron, about 4% nickel, and about 1% of other stuff that we're not quite sure about. At the very centre of the earth, you can imagine as you go deeper, things get hotter and hotter and hotter. At the very centre, it is 4,000 times hotter than what we experience at the Earth's surface. You might think because it's so hot that the very centre would be liquid, but it's not. It's actually solid. The inner core is solid because think of all that enormous pressure that's weighing down on that core. All that weight of the rock above makes that inner core solid. It is, however, surrounded, not like the beach, but it is surrounded by a liquid outer core. And because that outer core is liquid, it can move, um, it can convect. And that motion of the liquid iron is what generates our magnetic field. And that magnetic field keeps us safe and protects us from harmful solar radiation and allows life on Earth to thrive. Between this core and the crust lies the bulk of Earth, the mantle, which is just like the flesh on the peach. The mantle, like the peach, is 84% of the volume of Earth. It's most of Earth, but we can't get to it. Inside the Earth in this mantle, if you've watched a few Hollywood movies, you might think it's a whole load of bubbling magma, but it's not. It's actually solid rock. And it's actually made up mostly of a mineral called olivine. I've gotten this sample here. And you can see this sample of olivine, that it's a very vivid shade of green, which means that inside of the Earth, most of the Earth, is actually green. When you think about that. Now, the properties of that rock, we think that rock is solid, but it behaves in different ways, the Earth's interior. The properties of it are actually quite similar to silly putty. So I've got some here in my hands and I'm just gonna play with it to get it into a ball. So at the surface of the earth where it's quite cold, and if we have rapid deformation at the surface, if I pull quickly, you can snap that putty. So that's brittle, brittle fracture, failure, and that's just like an earthquake. So fault rupturing at the earth's surface. Deeper in the earth, over short time scales, the Earth's mantle actually behaves um, like an elastic medium. And that's kind of like this being like a bouncing ball or a tennis ball. So I'm just going to bounce it, probably can't see over here, <laughs> and I catch it again. So it recovers quickly. Over very long time scales, over geological time, so I've now been playing with this ball and it's quite warm, deep in the Earth, and over long time scales, if I pull very slowly, you can see that the putty starts to flow. It's not going to break, it just starts to deform very slowly, and it's not going to recover that deformation. It stays in that state. And that's just like the Earth's interior, the mantle, over a long geological time, it can flow and convect, and ultimately that's what drives plate tectonics at Earth's surface. Next time you're in the kitchen, chopping an onion or eating a peach, no doubt you'll remember all the three main layers of the Earth the crust, the mantle, and the core.